privacy case. Uh, four years later, TikTok still has not taken sufficient action to fix the problems. Uh, I assume because child users are incredibly profitable to your bottom line. Uh, so answer me this. TikTok allows advertisers to specifically target advertising to children age six, 13 to 17, correct? Congresswoman, um, I do want to disagree yes with the no. statement that child yes. abuses are not allowed on yes. our platform yes at all. No. It's deplorable target, conduct and it's target, not allowed on our platform. target advertising to, to young people age 13 to 17? We do serve personalized okay, advertising at this point, and but the policies money, are very safe for how them. How much money does TikTok make uh, selling ads targeted to minors? On March 23rd, 2023, TikTok's chief executive officer, Xiao Zhechi, testified in front of Congress over the app's potential consequences on personal and national security. Previously, the CEOs of Twitter, Facebook, and Google testified to Congress over similar reasons. These congressional hearings are the culmination of growing concerns about the way companies use our data. As it turns out, collecting personal information is quite profitable for corporations that base their company model around advertising. You see, for every post you click, every video you watch, and every question you search, that data is saved by data brokers and big tech corporations. These companies compile a variety of personal information, from your hobbies and interests to your life at home, to create a detailed profile of who you are. Through algorithms and artificial intelligence, companies are able to cater advertisements specifically for your taste, using the information they've collected from your online presence. In fact, Companies know so much about you that there have been nearly 100 points of data identified as being used by Facebook for advertising purposes. These personalized data profiles are one of the many things making online marketing enticing to businesses looking for growth. The advent of the internet has also made digital advertising more accessible than ever before. Besides being cheaper than traditional methods, making your presence known online is just easier. Almost anybody can launch their ads online or create a social media account for the brand. This accessibility in price and simplicity is especially valuable for small businesses where the resources available for brand growth is limited. Uh, hi, Andrew. How are you? This is Nico. He runs a local nonprofit business selling chocolate here in North Carolina. I reached out to him wanting to know how the internet has helped him maintain his brand. Actually a really good question and a very relevant one at that, but I want to kind of start in the beginning where I actually didn't even have like a social media account dedicated just towards the business and this was in freshman year, spring of freshman year, like April 2022, where I would literally just post on my personal account, on my stories, and I wasn't really marketing that well, like every now and then I would just be like, hey, like there's like a new flavor if you want to like order, and I think that starting sophomore year, I was really able to first like gain the courage, not necessarily the courage, but just like gain the time to really manage and create my own like social media account just for my chocolate business. And I think that ever since then, I've been really able to not only just like get like reach more people and engage more people in my business, but also be able to find creative mediums to kind of promote my stuff through like concept videos or just like trendy, trendy material and stuff like that. The accessibility of the internet has allowed smaller businesses to market themselves at a larger scale and give them the freedom to make creative decisions with less risk. When Nigo posted his first Instagram reel, he received about a thousand views. Today, a single post of his has been able to reach 10 million people. However, while modern marketing has proven to be beneficial for businesses, both big and small, is the abundant presence of ads coming at the cost of consumers? The convenience of online marketing is a strength for local brands looking to make a name for themselves. But the problem with allowing anybody to advertise themselves to the world is the fact that anybody can advertise themselves to the world. Spending on digital ads is increasing every year, and over 90% of the spending happens through automated software. The lack of manual review on ads, coupled with the ease of getting your ads seen, makes it almost guaranteed that a chunk of the ads we see will be suspicious garbage. Advertisements for illegal supplements, investment scams, and pseudoscientific cures for cancer 
have all been found on social media sites such as Facebook. You might have seen some sketchy ads yourself. I decided to make my own Facebook account to see what all the excitement was about. Within one minute, I found an ad claiming it did calm my anxiety with the touch of a button. For the low price of nearly $300, I could get a device that, according to Harvard Medical School, would not be FDA approved if it were a drug. Immediately after clicking on this ad, three more ads came up, all offering their own mental health solutions. Even if the advertisements are legitimate, where they end up might not be. Because advertisements are churned out through algorithms with little human oversight, online ads are peddled onto less than reputable websites promoting anything from misleading propaganda to conspiracy theories, thereby funding their spread of misinformation. If these ads come from established brands, they also lend a sense of legitimacy to the websites they're on. Users may begin to associate advertised brands with the websites where they're located. Many advertisers would never consider funding these sites, but because their ads are often distributed by a third party, they have no way of knowing where their ads go. An analysis found that, out of 800 misleading articles about COVID-19, nearly half of them were funded by ads that were placed by Google. Companies usually try to drop their ads from suspicious sites, but when billions of ads are being placed all around the internet, they fail to keep up with the pace. The lack of accountability on where ads go is so severe that the World Federation of Advertisers state they predict by 2025, digital advertising will be second only to the drug trade as a source of income for organized crime. The ads themselves are only part of the problem though. The data used to distribute these ads also bring up concerns of their own. Although the majority of Americans have a general awareness of the process by which their data is being collected, not too many are keen on the way their data is used. With the vast information companies have on hand, we need to consider what applications of our data we are and aren't okay with. Targeted ads, terrorist assessments, and army recruitments are all uses that people generally found to be uncomfortable with. Although people are aware their data is being collected, they still expect a reasonable amount of privacy. What they may not realize is the potential implications behind companies knowing so much about them. Who told you that? <laughs> Who gave you that piece of information? Are all the details of your private life being freely available to corporations worth the YouTube ads? Each of these three issues are troublesome enough individually. But what's worse is that each of these problems build off each other. Profiles built using user data help suspicious brands target the people most susceptible to falling for dubious ads. Often, people most likely to be misled by ads find themselves on unreputable websites, which means these personalized ads end up funding those sites. User activity on these sites and ads help build up more data, which can be used to direct even more ads, starting the cycle all over again. Advertisements are not inherently bad. At their core, they're a way for brands to reach new audiences and bring attention to goods and services that consumers wouldn't know about otherwise. At the same time, however, the world of marketing has changed. Chances are your personal information is being collected for shady advertisements on propaganda websites. But it doesn't have to be. Both individuals and organizations have a responsibility to make sure that they're keeping themselves and others safe from dangerous advertising. If you run a brand, audit your ad campaigns. Ask for logs that tell you exactly where your ads are going. If you're an ordinary person scrolling through the internet, stay vigilant. Always verify you're buying from reputable sellers and consuming information from reputable reporters. And if you're concerned about your privacy, call up your representative. Only three states in America have comprehensive data privacy laws, California, Virginia, and Colorado. At the time of writing, Bill 525, the North Carolina Consumer Privacy Act, has been introduced to the Carolina Senate. In this bill, consumers would have the right to request and receive information about who has their personal information and how it's being used. If they wanted, they would have the right to request that certain information be changed or removed. In the meantime, you can choose from a variety of software that helps you protect your private information. Just 
make sure that the software you're using isn't also stealing your data. The internet can be as dangerous as it is beautiful, and you deserve control over your presence in it. You don't have to be paranoid, but be wary of potential consequences, because not everybody has the best intentions. Whatever you choose to do, stay safe. And in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.